Welcome to Section 3, Application Services. In this section, we will get an introduction to the simple queue service, SQS, and exam tips. We will introduce the fundamentals of SQS and the best practices around it. We will get an introduction to the simple notification service, or SNS, and exam tips. We will have a general introduction to SNS and its main characteristics. We will get hands-on experience with SNS. We will learn how to interact with SNS using the console. Then we will look at an introduction to the Simple Workflow Service, or SWF. We will get an overview of SWF and the differences from SQS. And we will conclude by having a quiz on application services. And we will review the key concepts and validate the knowledge gained in this section. Welcome to video for Introduction to the Simple Queue Service, SQS, and Exam Tips. In this video, we will introduce the Simple Queue Service, its main characteristics, as well as we will have some exam tips while we discuss this section. What is SQS? SQS is a fully managed message queuing service. It is a reliable, highly scalable hosted queue for storing messages in transit between computers. It allows you to move data between distributed components without message loss and without requiring each component to be always available. So you can imagine if you have a producer, for example, any type of application that is going to put messages onto SQS, which will act as a buffer, and those messages are going to be picked up by a consumer. We are going to take this as a very easy approach. But let's say that your producer goes down because of internet connectivity loss or there are issues on the host. You can still have your consumer still be able to consume or read those messages and process them because SQS will allow the consumer to do so. SQS will decouple your application. So even if a part of your architecture goes down, the rest of it is not going to be affected because the rest of it can still process messages. Let, now, let's see what other advantages there are to using SQS. SQS allows for loose coupling, that is, it will give you high availability, scalability, and reliability for your architecture. It uses multiple redundant availability zones within the region, and because of this, it will prevent message loss due to a single failure. It is integrated with IEM, so you can decide who can access your queue, who can produce messages and add them to your queue, who can read them, as well as delete them. It's PCI DSS compliant, that is, you can transmit merchant and current data using SQS. Multiple producers and consumers can interact with SQS at the same time. So you can have an application where multiple producers are going to send messages to your SQS queue, and at the same time, multiple consumers can pick those messages up and read them and delete them. Then, the message size is a maximum of 256 kilobytes of text data, and that can be in JSON, XML, and formatted text. But you're going to be built at 64 kilobytes chunks, because this is for legacy reasons, beforehand you, your maximum message size would have been 64 kilobytes. And now you're going to be built at 64 kilobytes. And for the maximum size of 256 kilobytes, you will get built as four different requests. You have 1 million requests per month for free, even if you are on the free tier or that has expired. There are two types of queues. The first type is the standard queue or the default queue. We will be focusing on this for our course in the exam. And then there is the newly introduced FIFO queue or first in, first out message delivery. It offers exactly once processing and it is limited to 300 transactions per second. This one has just been recently announced and has been released to two regions in the States and AWS say that they will launch it in even more regions, but for now this is not included in the exam. 
we're going to refer to the standard Q as SQS from now on. And the standard Q or SQS offers nearly unlimited throughput, at least once delivery. That is, more than one copy of your message can be delivered. It offers best effort ordering. That is, messages can be delivered in an order that is different from the one that they were sent in. And you should think about designing your applications to be idempotent because you can receive the same message more than once in a very occasional manner, but that could still happen. You should design your applications not to be affected if this scenario occurs. So let's say you're going to receive the same message twice or three times and you would have to process it as part of your application. If you have a highly sensitive application that should not be able to process the message more than once, you should think about redesigning it so as to not impact you negatively if this rare scenario occurs. So you should think about making it idempotent. If you need order to be maintained, you should add sequencing information in each message so you can then reorder your messages once they are received on the application side. Now let's see what a standard queue uh, architecture might look like. We're going to exemplify it using S3 as our producer and EC2 instances as our consumers. You can think about using various different producers and consumers, but for this I want to show you a more practical example that is quite easy to follow along. So we have an S3 bucket and whenever we get a new file added to our bucket, we want a bucket notification to be added to our SQS queue. A bucket notification can be enabled and that is going to directly add a message to SQS. Then, when one of our EC2 instances is going to read a message of our queue, it's going to have a visibility timeout associated with it. This is the time that the message is going to be made invisible to all the other consumers that are available. So let's say we have a visibility timeout of one minute. In that particular minute, once this EC2 instance has read this message, no other consumer can actually read this message. It becomes invisible to everybody else. And we can think about when the visibility timeout expires and this EC2 instance hasn't said, I want to delete this message. This actual message is going to become available again. But if the EC2 instance has made a delete request before the message visibility timeout, SQS will usually delete that message, but as we said before, there is that slight chance that you might get the message again because SQS offers an at least once delivery. But in the usual use case, it's not going to happen. You're going to be able to delete your message. And let's look a bit at visibility timeout. The default for it is 30 seconds. You can specify a maximum of 12 hours. And you can actually extend the visibility per message by using the change message visibility API and changing the visibility timeout parameter. When you're going to call the change message visibility API, it just means that your message's visibility timeout is going to be restarted with the new visibility timeout parameter that you've given. So if you're going to add a new visibility timeout 20 seconds in, it's going to be those 20 seconds plus your message visibility timeout that you've just specified. Or you can set it per the whole queue by using the set queue attributes API and specifying the visibility timeout parameter. And again, you have to remember that the maximum visibility timeout for a message is 12 hours. Then, another fact about SQS, you can use it with auto-scaling groups to automatically expand or shrink the number of EC2 instances based on queue metrics. For example, the number of messages in the queue. Or, if you need to specify and or create a priority queue, 
for example, premium members versus standard members, you can't actually create a priority queue using SQS. But to allow priority to happen, you would have to use two separate queues. And you can specify that you want to allocate more resources to processing your premium members queue and a fewer resources to your standard members, or you can have your architecture process the messages from the premium queue service, and only when that message queue is empty, you can process the standard member queue. It depends on what you want to do with your application, but for priority, you will need to have separate queues. Then there is a different technique that we need to talk about. This is fanning out with SNS and SQS. That is, you can have a publish subscribe type of architecture. Your producer, when it's going to produce a new message, it will publish this message to a new SNS topic. We won't be exploring SNS in the next video. But what this is going to do, it's going to allow us to replicate the same message to multiple queues. So let's say that we want our order queue and our audit queue to have the contents of the same message and for different applications to read the content and processes so let's say we have an, an audit application and we want those messages to be processed independently of one another but we need the content to stay the same for both we can use this sns topic and allow our producer to publish to it and that sns topic will be able to publish directly to our two queues and have the same content for the message. And each of the applications is going to be able to process the contents of the message independently of the other application. Another fundamental concept of SQS is long polling. Short polling is the default behavior and this means that it will return immediately even if there are no messages in the queue. Short polling queries only a subset of the servers. Long polling eliminates false empty responses by querying all rather than a limited number of the servers. Long polling returns messages as soon as any message becomes available. So let's say for example you're going to set your long polling timeout to 20 seconds, but your application is not going to wait for that time if a message becomes available. So let's say a message becomes available in after five seconds. You will only wait for five seconds up until you're going to receive that message rather than the whole 20 seconds. And you can enable long polling by changing the receive message wait time seconds parameter from zero, which is the default, to up to 20 seconds maximum. AWS recommend that you set the receive message wait time seconds to 20 seconds because this will minimize the number of false empty responses because you're going to minimize the number of queries that your application is going to make to SQS when there are no messages. You can use long polling to reduce costs and false empty responses. Long polling requests are built exactly as short polling requests. And because with short polling, you're going to uh, query the queue over and over again, you're going to be built for a lot more requests than if you wait for a specified period before you attempt to make a read request again. Long polling can help avoid burning CPU cycles. For example, when you're using EC2s to actually read from your queue. Or process your messages. SQS can send, receive, delete a maximum of 10 messages. You can specify this to be a batch request or this could be a single request. With a single request you can only send or delete one message. There are batch uh, request types to send, receive, delete a maximum of 10 messages. But you have to remember that the maximum size of a message or of all of that batch, that is all the 10 messages, can be 256 kilobytes. The message retention period is from one minute up to 14 days. The default is four days. And if you surpass 
the message retention period, that message is going to be automatically deleted by SQS. Delaying queues let you postpone the delivery of new messages in the queue for the specified number of seconds. Any message that you send to that queue is invisible to consumers for the duration of the delay period. It can start from 0 seconds to 15 minutes. A dead letter queue is a queue that other source queues can target for messages that can't be processed or consumed successfully. So you can think about using dead letter queues when you have the scenario where you've tried to process a message, but there could have been some errors inside the message itself and maybe it did not comply to your schema and you want to investigate it separately. You could actually put that message onto a dead letter queue and investigate it using a different application or raise an alarm. You can do all of that and you can process the, all your messages that have not successfully been processed separately.